Okay, so I think we are hopefully live. Let's uh, let's see if we are. Can someone say hello in the comments if if we are live? Ah. Yes, okay, we are live. So we're live here on Instagram. And we are live on YouTube here. So the plan for about 20 or 30 minutes is to, uh, yeah, just a bit of catch up, uh, have a bit of a chat about today's lack of action and the action throughout the tournament. Uh, if someone could tell me somewhere on this chat that they can hear me, that would be awesome. Because I haven't done this in ages. Can anyone, could someone just tell me they can hear me okay and see me okay? So on Instagram here and then on um, on YouTube there. Can anyone say yes? Namaste, everyone. Yes, okay. Thank you, Vivek Dunga. You're in the good books. So uh, let's have a bit of a chat about the tournament before we get into any questions. We are just past the um, halfway stages. Uh, I don't know what is going on on Instagram here. Sadeep, I'm, I swipe down to the client. No, I'm not joining that call. Um, so very hello, everyone. Uh, welcome along. We're going to have a bit of a chat about the ACC Premier Cup so far, how good a tournament has been, um, and what's been going on. And um, yeah, who's going to maybe take that, firstly, the one qualification place to go on and play against India and Pakistan in the Asia Cup, which is about the biggest prize you could imagine, really guaranteed games against India and Pakistan and star sports around the world and the exposure that that will bring uh, for the nation that does qualify and in the top three teams who go on and um, take the spots at the Emerging Cup. So that's actually a really good cricketing prize as well, because from a cricketing viewpoint, you know, you get to play against the A teams of all of the major test nations, the five test nations that there are in Asia. So that's a huge prize. Uh, the halfway stages, let's run through the points tables. Um, it's slightly past halfway stages because both games were washed out today and I actually slept for the first time in about 10 days. So that was good, feeling uh, pretty good. We'll come to the questions in a moment. I'm not seeing any of them right now. So in about two or three minutes, we'll start some questions. Group A, uh, Nepal are on top. They're unbeaten uh, with five points. Contrary to some reports, I saw some posts on uh, social media today. They have qualified for the semifinals. They actually haven't yet. They're incredibly likely to because they're net run rate advantage. But in theory, and bear with me for the theory, in theory, you could see uh, Oman win their last game um, and Saudi Arabia win their last game and Nepal lose their last game, in which case Nepal and Saudi Arabia would be joined at five points and Oman would be on six. So they could still finish third in theory. I think it's actually very likely that they'll top the table. Uh, their last group game, Nepal is against Qatar who are yet to win a game and haven't played particularly well so far in this tournament. So Nepal should win Group A. Now for second place could get really interesting because of that washout today. Saudi Arabia actually probably benefited from that because they would have been likely to lose, although I was very impressed with their bowling attack uh, in the one game that I, I commentated on them so far. So um, Nepal should top Group A, but second is much more opaque because Saudi have a real chance. Saudi's task is very clear now. They beat Oman in their last game, they will take that second spot. And that is, you know, potentially game changing for Saudi cricket and for, you know, all of the potential for the sport there. Big country, 35 million people, and uh, yeah, a bit of a sleeping giant to the associate game. You'd expect Oman to win. Zishan Maksud has been excellent as always. He gets better and better with age. Bilal Khan seems to be bowling as quickly as ever. Looks really fit, really trim. Uh, really sad what happened, happened to Aki Vilyas with that thumb injury. Um, so devastated for him. But um, Oman should have enough. But if Saudi could bring an upset, maybe they could take second spot. So let's chalk in, kind of stick them in there, uh, Nepal, as winning that group. And then who's going to be second? Oman, most likely. Saudi with a chance. And also. Uh, Malaysia with a chance as well. But actually, that result today kind of counted against them because for them to get through now, I don't even know how they're going to get through because I, I'm not sure they can. Uh, I'm literally doing this on the fly. They actually, because of the non result today, I think they're knocked out. I think four points isn't going to be enough. Even if Oman and Saudi was a washout, that would take Oman to five and Nepal already at five. So, yeah, poor on Malaysia. Uh, someone's going to correct me on that, but I think they're gone. Okay, Group B, uh, Hong Kong have been excellent so far. Uh, the return of Anson uh, Rap, massive, Babar Hyatt, a Centurion. I've actually got my notes here, and we now have had nine Centurions, or eight separate people make centuries. And, um, yeah, two of them going to Vriti Aravind, but Babar Hyatt um, and Anson Rap making them for Hong Kong. Uh, Vriti Aravind uh, with two, and Mahmoud Wazim for UAE, Kushal Mala with that, 
quite incredible century. I think anyone who saw it will never forget it. Um, for Nepal, off 59 balls. Um, Abdul Wahid, excellent innings for Saudi to get them their first win in the tournament. And Jatinder Singh continued to sell his class. So we've actually only had six completed game days. Today was a complete washout. Nine centurions. That shows the quality of the pitches and the quality of the cricket as well. Credit to everyone involved. So Group B, Hong Kong, right, right in the mix for this qualification uh, spot, top one. Uh, spot in the whole tournament even though they're not an ODI nation they've got a great record in the Asia Cup qualifier and they're doing it again the return of Anselm and Rath Barbara Hyatt Nizgat Khan and the grand old man Isan Khan I think he's the second leading run scorer the second leading wicket taker uh, incredible so credit goes in a big way to Hong Kong uh, for being in such good form uh, UAE in second they've been absolutely brilliant they went down to quite a heavy defeat to Hong Kong, and then they're absolutely brilliant again. 371 they scored in the first game, and then 471 in the most recent. Ludicrous ball striking. Uh, Wazim, 160 off 82. Uh, Verdi Aravind with two daddy hundreds, massive innings, 185, 174. Um, he'd never made more than 150 before at any level, so utter superstar. And isn't it fitting that the leading run scorer in the tournament, Verdi Aravind, is 20, and the leading wicket taker in the tournament, Ian Khan, is 17. That shows the young talent, and that's not even mentioning Kushal Mala. Um, so the young talent being exposed here at the Asia Cup qualifier, just sensational. Who's going to take that second qualification spot in Group B? It's really, in fact, who's going to take top spot and second spot? Very hard to call. I should have had my list of games remaining here. Singapore are gone. They've, they've played three, lost three. They've been really disappointing. Missing a couple of their best players hasn't helped them. But Bahrain have only played, uh, or Bahrain have played three games. That washout today don't think that re really would have helped them. They'll have fancied beating Hong Kong. And what it means is that they're going to have to definitely beat UAE in their final game. And if they do, that will knock UAE out. They are gone. And that would then very likely put Hong Kong and Bahrain through. But Kuwait could actually win their last two matches. And, and if they do that, that could knock Hong Kong out. So a lot more to be played for in Group B still. Then it all comes down to Saturday. There's been a few questions about the rain. The weather has been a concern. Looks pretty good. Maybe not so much for tomorrow, but Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday's the day we don't play. So Wednesday, Thursday should be fine. You should get a great crowd for the last Nepal game back at the TU. That's Nepal versus Qatar. And in fact, a little bit of a top secret piece of news for these two streams. We're going to have a bit of a ticket promotion, some free tickets again. I did that off my own, but where, where is it? I went and found somehow still have some money. Uh, despite all the traveling, uh, so I found a thousand um, Nepali rupees and bought five tickets. Actually, I ended up buying seven, but it doesn't matter. Um, to give away for free. And my pay have got in touch with me and said they want to do that again. And I don't have to pay this time. Maybe I still will. Maybe I'll double it. Anyway, we're going to do some free tickets for Thursday. I've got a really good crowd. Um, if you want to get those in advance, I'll buy them now 150 rupees. If you buy in advance of my pay, I think it's 200 rupees on, on the day in cash. So, yeah, look forward to seeing you all there on Thursday. That'll be a really good game that we'll see on Nepal's place in the semi finals. Then, looking ahead to the semis, I'll make a prediction. I think Oman will have too much for Saudi Arabia, even though I don't think that game will be easy for Oman. So, I think Nepal will win Group A with Oman second. The other group, my God, so difficult to call. I think UE are playing so well, they should win their final game, even though Bahrain are a bit of a bogey side for them. That'll get them to six points. So they'll qualify. The question is, will they qualify in first or second? Kuwait could well win their last two. I think they could put it up to Hong Kong. I don't know who to call in that other group, but probably most likely we do have the Fab Four being Nepal, Oman, Hong Kong and UAE, but don't really like Kuwait or Bahrain. Fair play to them and fair play to Saudi Arabia for the way they're playing. So let's call the semifinals Nepal versus uh, UAE and then Oman versus Hong Kong and then let's call it I'm not going to call the semis who knows no idea uh, but one thing's for certain that's a Saturday game there's a little bit of a grudge match it's kind of turning into the associate El Clasico Nepal versus UAE that game is going to be nuts it's going to be a brilliant cricket be a huge crowd see hopefully let's hope the weather holds and yeah just going to be mega so I've somehow done 10 minutes there without even taking a question let's get into the questions if you're on uh, Instagram here on this one. Uh, just type in the messages now. We'll get start with a few of those. And if you're on YouTube, they're much easier to look back on. So, um, yeah, let's get to those and we'll run through them. So let's start on Instagram. I don't think I go. Can I go back on Instagram? Let's see. Okay, looks like I can. Firstly, hello everyone. Um, someone says Paul Sterling is the best. Yet yeah, fully agree. He was outstanding today. Seventy-four and out. Ireland went really well. 
Um, Vivek Powell says US, UAE always seemed dominant over Nepal. Um, maybe historically, not, not so much in recent times. What was my jersey number while I played for Ireland? That's Prashant. I never got capped for Ireland, sadly. My jersey number for Pembroke, my club was 17. Always loved 17. Um, Upadhyaya Bishal says it's going to be a Nepal versus UAE semi final. Tough for Nepal. I'd agree with that. Ishan Shrestra says it's going to be a Hong Kong versus UAE final, I think. Uh, Badaria Grade says Taklu Dai. Uh, that means bold. If you're not from Nepal, it means bold elder brother. Uh, it's a nickname I quite like. Some people are saying I don't like it. I think it's very funny. I am very bold. I'm just back from the uh, the barber there. Um, who else? Uh, Prashant says how many free tickets for the next game? We'll definitely do some, I promise you. Um, and we'll do something fun with it on social media. Um, Sujan Thapa says the Asia Cup Nepal are going to qualify. Yeah, if they do, my God, what a moment it would be for Nepali cricket. Um, to see the side they have now take on India and Pakistan, I think it would be so exciting. I'm not saying that Nepal would beat India or Pakistan. That that's you know probably a bridge too far. I think they compete. I think they would show both individually and as a team just how far they've come. I think they'll show that in Zimbabwe, whatever happens in this Asia Cup qualifier. But to get two games against India and Pakistan would be just incredible. Uh, Abhishek, thanks for the lovely message. Very kind. Barashestra, hello, Daju. Namaste, namaskar to you, my friend. Um, Shishir, he thinks an old man versus Hong Kong final. Yeah, it's a chance. Barash, that's very kind of you to say. I'm not sure I'm Nepal's lucky charm. Uh, nothing to do with me. It's all about the boys on the pitch. They are awesome. And, and the whole the whole setup around them, uh, Monty Desai, um, Ramandai, um, Vikram Naponi, everyone, just everyone involved. I'm um, forgetting all the other assistant coaches there. Brilliant. Um, John Magar asking, not related to the ACC Cup, but can Kushal Malapratish and Kushal play the under-19? Uh, Gulshan Jha play the under-19 World Cup? I don't know, actually, off the top of my head. I know Gulshan Jha was due to be captain of that team uh, and Pratish GC was in it. So I think those two can. Kushal Mala, I think, might be too old because he's, he's probably past the threshold as a 19-year-old. Kanal says, why do I love Nepal so much? Um, I just love it here. It, it's an amazing place. People are lovely. The food is excellent. Uh, I'm actually, as soon as we finish up here, I'm going to go straight out and get some chicken cote momos. Um, there's a spirituality to the place. There's a, an innocence to the place. There's a joy. There's a... I don't know. I adore the place. It's very genuine. Um, I think I've had 14 or 15 trips here now. I, I I just did three weeks in Bangladesh, which was brilliant from a cricketing perspective, but I, I was really, at the end of that, you know, I had a quick trip back to Europe, but I was really looking forward to getting back to Nepal. I just love it here. Um, I don't know. You're in the land of the gods. How could you not love it? It's it's incredible here. Um, it, it's just one of my favorite places on the planet, bar none. And I haven't even... You know, I haven't even got to the real touristy places that everyone talks about. And I'm hopefully going to do that at some point in the future, go down and do the Annapurna circuit with some friends. So, yeah. Uh, okay, more questions. I'm just going to stick with Instagram for like another two minutes and then we'll come to all the YouTube ones because there's hundreds coming in on YouTube there. And I'm, God, I'm going to try and keep up with them. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, okay, who do I think will win this tournament, says Capiel. Uh, I can't call it. <laughs> I've narrowed it down to four. I think that's as far as I'm willing to go. Maybe Nepal on home soil. The UAE are playing amazing cricket since their new head coach or the new interim head coach has come in and they all seem so happy and they're such a talented team. That mix of youth and experience, they're going to be very hard to beat. Don't rule out Hong Kong. And then we always seem to rule out Oman and they keep proving everyone wrong. I do think Ibilias being injured for them is a big blow and maybe that might mean they won't have enough. Uh, Ishan Pandey, hello, lovely to see you, mate. Uh, Asif Sheikh on here. G'day, guys. Uh, you're probably somewhere in this hotel because we're here in the higher place. There, somewhere else in the hotel. Asif Sheikh, good to see you. Uh, Neraz Ketka is saying Kushal Mal is good at number five. Yeah, would fully agree with that. I spent most of the uh, first couple of series during Cricket World Cup and um, League Two talking about why he should be in the middle order. And uh, yeah, great to see him there. Uh, what happens if the semis get washed out? Good question from Sujan. Uh, I don't know the answer off the top of my head, but I'd be pretty sure it would go to the ranking in the group. Um, don't quote me on this, but I, I'd be pretty certain. So in that case, if the tables end, ended as they are now, there is no reserve day for the semifinals. I can say that for sure. There is a reserve day for the final. 
So let's just say a disaster and it rained all day Saturday. I think if Nepal go on to win the group and all they'll need to do that is to beat Qatar in their final game. Um, in fact, even a washout may be enough. Um, in fact, it wouldn't. A man would, if a man won the last game, it would be enough then. Uh, they would advance to the semis and then the same in Group B, whoever wins Group B. Um, can Nepal beat India in the Asia Cup? I'm going to say no, but I'm going to say they could compete uh, if they if they can win this tournament. Uh, Anjan Dalakati says, what about getting married in Nepal with a Nepalese girl? Um, I'm very happily single, that's okay. We'll move on from that. Uh, Avi Poo uh, says, the death over bowling might be a problem. Yeah, it has been a problem, but I think Nepal have worked really hard on that. Um, Bebek, versus, uh, Bebek says, Nepal versus Ireland in the 2023 World Cup qualifier, one spot remaining, who's going to win? I don't know. If that's the situation, if you offer me that situation now, I would take it because it means that either Nepal or Ireland are going to the Cricket World Cup, which is just 10 teams, and that would be epic. So, uh, look, I'm so excited about Zimbabwe. I think that could be one of the greatest times for associate cricket has ever been. It's already a kind of a new zenith for associate cricket. They've played better than ever. Um, and yeah, look, I think there's a real chance one of the associates goes there and qualifies from that qualifier in Zimbabwe. I'm so excited for all six of them that are going. That's um, Netherlands coming down from the Super League, the top three in Cricket World Cup League Two, which is Scotland, um, Oman and Nepal, who took that third spot with such amazing uh, drama last month. And then the two that got through the playoff USA were excellent, inspired by Ali Khan and Gajanan Singh. Um, and the youngster, Simon Kamala, brilliant century uh, for him shows what, what a talent he is and that there's good talent coming through the American system. And then UAE bounced back. So all six of those associates, I think, can beat Test Nations. And I think we'll put it up to Sri Lanka and West Indies and Ireland and Zimbabwe. So that's going to be just such a good tournament. So excited for that. Um, Sylvan Kurula, who do I think that the Nepal's fast bowling lineup should be for the semis? Um, look, I think obviously spin bowling probably is the strength right now. Um, it looks like Monty is rotating um, Gulchin Jha and Karen Casey in alternate games. I think Sampal's a must pick. Um, just depends on the day. Yeah, both both very good options and both great cricketers. Um, what else we got? <laughs> Taklu Dice is Bandur. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, yeah, more problems with this, the death bone. I agree with that. Uh, nice to hear from uh, Maksud. Watch out for Bangladesh. It was great to be there. Uh, Vivek, yes, I am single. <laughs> Um, John, no, I haven't got to any of the cities of late, but I have been down to Barawa before, which I really enjoyed, and I've taken quite a few motorbike rides around the valley, but never down to Pokhara. Uh, Sudeep was asking how long it was going to take for Nepal to gain uh, test status. Uh, hard to know. Um, I think it's probably a five to ten year project. Uh, it would be great to see them become a full member of the ICC alongside. I think the way it would work is that the ICC would, would like with Ireland and Afghanistan, would promote two sides. They're not going to do it as a one-off. So maybe one from the Asian region and one from another part of the world, um, Scotland, Namibia, Netherlands, USA, who knows? Um, they'd be the others from outside of uh, Asia, but certainly Nepal, with all the progress they're making of late, could be really staking a claim. And um, wouldn't that be amazing, Test cricket? Uh, Bibek asks, what sport would I like to commentate apart from cricket? Going to go darts. Darts or uh, NFL. They're kind of the only two sports I watch. I watch nothing but cricket, really. Uh, Holly, nice to see you. Long time no see. Hope all gone well. Um, that's going to wrap it up for the Instagram ones. We'll get to all the. There's loads of more questions, but I'm not going to get to them all. I'm sorry because there's so many coming in. On um, okay, good to see you uh, on YouTube. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to come to the last like 20 YouTube questions. Nan, nice to see you too. Satchet as well. Namaste everyone on YouTube. Sorry, I was paying attention to the, we're multitasking here. We're doing the Instagram uh, live feed as well. Okay. Uh, Pradeep Bandari on uh, YouTube. Nice to hear from you. Says Ireland are doing great in Sri Lanka. They really are delighted. So, so proud of the boys today. Um, I got to watch all of it as well because uh, we had a rain day here. So I don't know whether that was fate, but that, that meant a lot to me. And uh, yeah, Andy Balberni, Paul Sterling, Lorcan Tucker, Curtis Camper there at the end. Amazing. Uh, even if that's all they do on this this trip, uh, remarkable. You know, uh, haven't played any Red Bull cricket in so long. Um, 
Tuki Anawazi, I'm not sure I agree with that. You're saying that you have to have 50% native players in your squad to play cricket. Um, not going to work. It's not the way the regulations work, and it, it's impossible to enforce. Uh, Abhishek, what is the reason behind my sexy hair? Well, I have none. So, yeah, thanks for that, Abhishek. Uh, the tackle die is very much in force. Fresh back from the barbers, though. Fresh back from the trim. Uh, Bishal Dahal wants to know what's my prediction about the finalists. Um, kind of already gone through this. I don't know who's going to win the semi-final if Nepal, if Nepal play UAE, which they could well. But right now, they're probably the two strongest sides in this tournament. And I, I think that's maybe a little unfair in Hong Kong. Hong Kong beat the UAE, but I think on a you know number of times they play each other basis, I do think that Nepal and UAE are the, are the strongest two teams in this tournament. But Oman and Hong Kong will have a lot to say about that. Um, Majesh Shubedi is saying uh, we will chant 10 rupees for Pepsi, Mustafa Vai is sexy, and then UAE will get nervy. Uh, if you're sledging him from the boundary, I don't think that's going to affect Rohan Mustafa. Uh, he's a great character. Love watching him play. Uh, Abhishek, uh, already answered that, not talking more about my bald head. Uh, Amit Yadav. Um, there is also an Andrew Leonard in the chat. I can report that that is a fake Andrew Leonard. Someone asked me that. <laughs> Please stop impersonating me, whoever you are. Um, okay, Rhythm Carol asks, sir, what do I eat? Uh, dal vat tarkari. I do have the dal sometimes at the ground. Uh, I don't mind dal. It's okay. Uh, big, big um, Momo fan, though. Love the Momos here. One of the reasons I think I love coming to, um, to Kathmandu so much. Uh, okay, getting to all these questions on YouTube. What room am I saying that, uh, says Linish Pande? You won't find out. I'm not telling you. Um, who knows? Nabin Joshi says, I've heard the news about um, possibly giving test hours to two new teams. Is this true? Well, it's not it, It's not like a bit of news that the ICC are just going to pick two teams and give them full membership next year. That's not how it works. It, it's a better process of, there's a lot of politics involved in it, but there's also a better process of fulfilling the full membership criteria of the ICC. And certainly the culture of cricket here in Nepal will massively advance Nepal's potential of being a full member in the future that's not going to be an overnight thing that i'd be massively surprised if that happens in january next year you know it's going to be a five to ten year process in my opinion but again that's up for the administrators um to look after um game chaser says hi taklu dai namaste namaste to you my friend what do i like most about being in nepal um it's hard to put it down to one thing i think it's everything there's a spirit here. There's an atmosphere here. There's a there's a grow here, which is an Irish word for love. Um, there's an innocence. There's a beauty. There's a kindness. Um, it reminds me a lot of Ireland in, in many ways. The people, it kind of reminds me of Ireland when I was growing up in some ways. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense because the countries are so different, but um, there's something really special about, about Nepal. And I just adore it here, genuinely really love it and it's something actually that the very first time i came here five years ago now it was all thanks to kevin o'brien and um, and paul sterling came with him for that that everest premier league and i think the two boys like they're all they're two of my best friends and i always check in with them and every time i come back to nepal they're like how's it going and god i wish i was there to have some chicken cote momos with you and enjoy a gorka beer and yeah, we just love it here. So um, that that's never going to change. I really do love it. Um, okay, Sam's asking, what should Nepal change in their T20 squad? Um, I think Abhinesh Bahar will come in, hopefully solve the death bowling. I guess you're talking about the Asian T20 World Cup qualifier, which I did see a rumor that Nepal may host. That was only a, some online talk, but that would be amazing. Uh, that's the T20 World Cup qualifier Asian region where two sides will qualify directly for... Uh, USA and West Indies next year and that is really really exciting it uh, really is um, trying to get more of uh, these questions in uh, Susan KC asking could Arjun Saud replace Kushal Bertel or Asif Sheikh in opening this always happens when like a guy has or two guys have two bad games they're opening the batting you're going to fail sometimes that's part of opening the batting I think Monty Desai has made it pretty clear his two openers are Asif Sheikh and uh, Kushal Bertel right now, and they're two very, very fine cricketers. Asif Sheikh is immaculate to watch. Yes, he got a duck the other day. Yes, Kushal Bertel got a duck the other day. It happens all the time. And, our, and that's not taken away from Arjun Saud. He's, he's a cracking young cricketer. 
uh, and he will, I'm sure, press to come into the team in the future, in the near future. But stick by the team that Monty Desai is picking. It's a very good one for a reason. Um, that's why they won 11 from 12. That's why they've won their first two games in this tournament. Don't try to change stuff for the sake of it. Uh, believe in Monty Desai. Believe in his process. Believe in Robert Pebble. Believe in the team. Um, another question there, just asking about what happens if the semifinals are being washed out. Again, I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure that uh, the winners of the group would advance automatically. There is no reserve there for the semifinals. I can confirm that for sure. Okay, these questions are coming in too quick. Uh, NA says, how do I spend my time other than cricket and commentary? Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm an absolute cricket nerd. I, I, I love it. Um, I like even like today, today was a day off, right? I spent the entire day in this lovely hotel room watching every ball of the Irish test match. I loved every second of it. So yeah, I don't know, that's what I do. And that's why I'm lucky to do what I do because I travel around the world commentating on cricket. So it's great. Um, okay, sorry, the question is coming in so quick, I'm struggling to stop it. Okay, YouTube. Uh, Heiser says words on Robert Powell's captaincy about how good he has been so young. Could not agree more. Uh, Robert is a special human. I, I, I really think the world of him, he is so calm, so cool. Um, He's so impressive for somebody so young and, and yeah, he is special. And there's a reason he's he's just kind of assumed that captaincy in such a natural manner. And and he's going to make mistakes. Every young captain does, every old captain does, they, they make mistakes. But he hasn't made many since he started and his calmness. And also, it's great to see his batting hasn't suffered. If anything, he's batting better as the captain. So that's really, really good to see. Uh, Robert Pedal, yeah, great cricketer. Um, Okay, uh, what else we got going on? Uh, OP game players has have Nepal qualified for the semifinals. Technically, no. There is a way that they could. It would take a ludicrous sort of three hundred run defeat or something like that, where if Saudi won their last game and Oman won their last game, then Saudi and Nepal would be tied on five points, and Oman uh, would go to six points. So Oman would win the group in that case. But this would mean that Qatar would have to beat Nepal by two hundred runs. Hey Chester, hey Leonard, great to see you. Uh, and a very hello. We need to get talking about uh, some cricket this summer back home. Uh, okay, who else is going on here on YouTube? Uh, Mr. Hyper says the Nepali openers are giving bad performances. Please see my words a few moments ago and just stick with them. Um, Lifeline says, I just subscribed to your YouTube channel from Nepal. Thank you. I'm trying to build that up a little bit. So do, if you're watching this, click subscribe. And I'm going to try and certainly through the rest of this tournament, we're going to do a video every day. The only reason I didn't do a video today was it poured rain all day. So there wasn't pretty much to talk about. So that's why we're coming on live instead. Uh, lots, I'll see if I can get back to some of those questions on Instagram, but there's too many on um, YouTube to get to. Um, Avesh Tuari says, is there a possibility for a team to lose test status if they perform bad? I don't think so is the answer. There's no precedent for it. It's never happened before. There's been a couple of members, uh, well, actually, we're, I think just Zimbabwe were suspended for a little bit, but that was, they had all sorts of administrative problems and they're now back in and they've got much better governance. And like, I think the biggest thing to take is, as a cricket fan, like let's, well, whatever your country you're from, if you're from here in Nepal, or if you're from USA, or if you're from uh, Namibia or Ireland, wherever you're from, you your team really is a byproduct of the success of your administration in many ways. It's difficult for the team to be doing well without the administration doing a good job in the background. So I, th I think that's where that kind of perfect storm has come about recently here in Nepal, where you know they did have some significant governance issues uh, historically three, four, five years ago, and now they seem to have got a lot of their stuff in order, doing a really good job off the pitch, and that is obviously helping on the pitch. There's always been talent here. There's always been good cricketers here, but they probably have never been able to piece it all together. And now I, I really think this is the start of the journey for Nepal. Where they could go is incredibly exciting. This year alone, they could qualify for an Asia Cup for the first time. They could qualify for a Cricket World Cup for the first time. And even if they don't, they could go and win a couple of games in Zimbabwe, beat a Test Nation for the first time. That's very possible. They could definitely qualify for a T20 World Cup for the first time since 2014. It's a 20-team T20 World Cup. There's two sides guaranteed qualification from Asia. That's a real possibility. They could go to that Emerging Cup for the first time, beat some Test Nations A teams. Like That's all this year in the next six months. So what we saw last month with 30,000 people in and around the TU International Cricket Ground and the most incredible you know, goosebump-giving occasions I, that you will ever imagine. I think we're going to see one of those on Saturday again in the semi-final. 
um, there's going to be more of them. And that's, that's only the start. And, and something I found out uh, literally just a couple of days ago from one of the heads of, heads of security and heads of police. Um, I, I was talking to him about last month and how much I, I enjoyed it and how special it was. And he told me that there was over 10,000 people down on the main road at the Tribune University entrance gates. I didn't know that. So there was already 30,000 or so in and around the ground. And there was another 10,000 kind of being held, unable to get up. And then I spoke to Sherrod Rissacker about that and he, he confirmed that. I was like, just the passion and love for the game here is so special. And it, it's, yeah, I, I adore it here. I'm so excited about firstly Thursday and then Saturday. And then who knows, maybe a final on Monday if they can get there. Uh, okay, more questions. Sorry, I went off on a tangent. I do that a lot. Um, okay, what uh, what do I say to uh, the Nepali cricket supporters? They love you and the Nepali team equally. I think they love the Nepali team and rightly so. Uh, I'm just lucky to be here and I really appreciate everyone being so nice to me. Um, number says, is it possible to make a vlog of a day in the life as a commentator? Yeah, could try and do that. The problem the schedule is here. It's crazy. And um, like, you know, our call time is 7 a.m. That's when we leave the hotels. We get to the ground about 8 a.m. Um, and then by the time you finish your day and wrap everything up, it's usually, you know, 7 p.m. Early you're getting back and then you've got to do it again. And there's only one rest day in this entire tournament. That's why I'll be honest, I, I was quite happy with the rain today and the day off. Don't give out to me. Um, okay, what else is going on? Uh, Sanjay's Kadka says, Guy and Andrew Mallow will score 100 in the next game. I think if he plays, he's got a great chance. He looks really good in the nets. I was watching him the other day. Uh, Milan Shahi says, who do I support in the IPL? Don't really support a team. Uh, brilliant to see an Irish guy there. Brilliant to see Sikandra Raza there. Brilliant to see David Visa. So like Zimbabwean, Namibian and an Irish guy all playing the IPL. That's massive. So I don't support a team. I do watch quite a bit of it in the evenings. Um, but I'm really just kind of cheering on Josh or cheering on Sikandra, David Visa, who debuted last night. And yeah. That'd be it. I also like my favorite players, of course, from the big nations. You know, I love watching Sri Kumar Yada Bat, who doesn't. I like him the other day, picking up six over his shoulder. Like the where the game is going, what we saw with UAE the other day, scoring 471, it was just incredible. And um, the game is so much light years on, you know, 20 years ago when I was trying to make it as a as a young cricketer. It, game was light years away you never you didn't even really see people reverse sweep you definitely didn't see people switch it and um, the game is it's it's benefited so much from t20 cricket even ireland excuse me today scoring 320 runs in in a day of test cricket like that's that's ireland that's you know probably the lowest of the rank to the 12 test nations in reality and they've got 320 runs in a day okay it was a good batting wicket but you know a few years ago, even scoring 300 in a day was unheard of. England are scoring 450 in a day now. It's, the game is getting better. And I, I, one thing that does frustrate me sometimes is, is you hear like particularly famous former players talking about, oh, the game was better in my day. But it just wasn't. It, like, it definitely wasn't. There were some brilliant cricketers, people I adored, who, who got me invite, involved in the game. Like, I didn't have a cricket background. Viv Richards is really the guy, Isaac Vivian Alexander, watching him stroll out. But the, like it was great then, it's even better now. You know, and I think people who say, oh, T20's killing the game. And I no, Test Cricket's better to watch now as a byproduct. One day international cricket's the best it's ever been. And the other small thing that annoys me, I don't know why I'm onto things that annoy me. You know, stop trying to malign one day international cricket. It is brilliant. It's, it's, you know, it's a critical format, particularly for those outside of the Test Nations. That is their Test cricket. That is their t pinnacle. Um, it helps them develop how to bat long. And look at Vritti Aravind in this tournament. You know, how can you not love ODI cricket right now? I know some of those games are, are list A or may not even be list A, but the, the 50 over format is integral. It's the bedrock of many club structures. It's, it's so important. Please stop trying to kill it. And that's why I'm really looking forward to the qualifier in June. Uh, July, and then hopefully a really good World Cup in India. Although I wish it was more uh, than 10 teams. Okay, we're going to go for another... What time are we? Oh, look at the phone. Okay, we're going to go for another five, 10 minutes. Final questions. Get them in either on Instagram if you're watching here. Hello, everyone. Or on YouTube here. Um, okay, Leonesh Pandey says, what will the environment be if Nepal plays Ireland at the TU ground? It would be awesome. Imagine Ireland versus Nepal as the inaugural floodlit series if these floodlights happen at that ground. How cool would that be like 
the best ever. So I think that would uh, that would be great. Suzanne KC, what would I have been in life if I wasn't a cricket commentator? Um, if it wasn't for cricket, I honestly don't know what I would be doing with my life. Um, I tried to make it as a player. I didn't quite make it. I then worked as a coach for quite a period of time. Uh, after I came back from some traveling, I, I did that on a permanent basis, thanks to Brian O'Rourke, my first boss. Um, I then became a tutor. I, I finished my level three coaching course. I was very young completing that. Then I went off and became an administrator. I worked for Cricket Ireland, and then somehow they they were good enough to me to um, you know, give me a good reference. And then I applied for the ICC and worked for the ICC for four years, three, four years. So yeah, if it wasn't for cricket, I honestly don't know what I'd be doing. And I never really intended to become a cricket commentator, but that's just happened naturally thanks to loads of people being really nice and saying I'm good at it. So um, I honestly don't know what I would do without cricket in my life. And that's why I think Ahmed Raza said something to me the other day, the UAE assistant coach, and I'd never heard anyone say this before, but I really took a lot from it. And I hope he doesn't mind me stealing it. He says, if you look after mother cricket and you respect the game, it will look after you. And I just thought that was such a lovely way to look at it. It's such a special sport we have. There's problems with it. There's challenges with it, of course. But like, there's nothing to replace the joy of that game, how special that sport is. And if you're good to the game, it's going to be good back to you, whether you play it or whether your kids play it or whether you volunteer at a club or you umpire, you score, whatever you do. And yeah, I think it's a special community, the cricket one. So yeah, absolutely love it. Uh, okay, what else we got? Last few questions and then we'll wrap it up. Um, okay, sorry, they, they keep coming in so quick. I'm just struggling to stop it. Lots of people asking what happens if it rains on Saturday. I really hope it's not going to, but it will be the highest ranked teams of the group. Um, Mar Harshi Nepal saying, Andrew, sir, can you please talk about an India A series to play matches with Nepal? That would be brilliant if they do finish in the top three in this tournament. Uh, how are you talking? Good to see you, man. Um, there would be a guaranteed game against India. That would be in the ACC Emerging Teams Cup. Um, Abhishek Acharya saying, what incident made me fall in love with life here in Nepal? I, I don't think it was one real incident. It was just a prolonged love affair with the country that I really hope continues. I really hope you keep inviting me back, please. Like, I'll never not come back. I, I adore it here. And there's something in the air, the atmosphere. I've gone over it a bit in this already. I just, I genuinely love it here. Um, NA says, hi, Andrew, do you see, uh, how do you see the future of Nepali cricket? Are there young players to watch in my view? I'll tell you one that was interesting. I'm not going to remember his full name. I think it was Bishal Naponi. Um, Bishal or Bikram Naponi. It was a young leg spinner that Monty Desai has at his uh, training sessions. I was, I was with the Nepal team in training yesterday. And I was really impressed by him. He's a young leg spinner. I think he's 19 or 20 and i haven't seen him in like the everest premier league or any of the domestic comps the mayor's cup yet or anything i was really taken by him pratish gc the left arm i know he's already in the squad he's a hell of a cricketer and then there was a quick called the cash who is in the nepal under 19s uh, i think i've got his name right i hope i'm got it wrong i'm sorry if i have but a big tall kind of strong 18 year old who bowled quite quick uh, looks like he could do with a little bit of work on his action and kind of conditioning and strengthening a bit more which will come in time but to be honest, I was pretty blown away by the scale of talent here in Nepal, and it's really competitive now. Um, okay, final few questions, and we will wrap it up. But you see, there's lots of the similar questions coming through that I've already answered. Um, yeah, nice question asking about um, the young associate cricketers doing well, and a special shout out for Aditya Bargava from Bar uh, Singapore, four wickets on debut yesterday. Yeah, well done, Tim, great effort. Um, lot to work with in that action and he's, he's got a bit of pace so uh, in what's been a terribly difficult tournament for singapore great to see him coming through um <laughs> everyone keeps sending the same messages so i'm struggling to see it ashok bandari says what about trekking sir i haven't done it yet abby yt says sandeep 100 wickets yeah amazing moment for, for sandeep lamachani i think a very emotional moment for him we saw him kiss the the, the pitch and um, so yeah and breaking rashi khan's record uh, two phenomenal leg spinners there. I love watching leg spinners bat. Uh, sorry, leg spinners bowl. I think I'm getting tired. I think this could be the end of the stream. Um, when did I first commentate on, on a Nepali match? Good question. Um, my first commentary here was for the Everest Premier League back in 2018. 
first international I would have done, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I'll have to look that up and come back to you. Uh, I keep meaning to do like a, a log of all the games I've ever done, but I haven't got around to that. So I'd love to know that. Uh, Mohan saying you can marry Nepali girls and stay here in Nepal with a big cowboy hat emoji. Good emoji. I, I, I'll take the fifth of that question. We'll move on. Um, somebody there asking, the email asking, if rain falls on Monday, is there a reserve day? Yes, there is. So that the finals on Monday, the 1st of May, if it's cataclysmic rain and we can't get out, we then play on Tuesday the 2nd. So all of us won't play until the 3rd. Um, is TU2 batting friendly, says JRJ, or was it poor bowling? Um I saw a few posts about this the last sort of 24 hours giving out that the wickets are too good. Like, you're very fickle, guys, altogether, aren't you? Like, you know, a couple of years ago, the wickets were too bad. There was too much spin net or too good. The, the, the team there have done a phenomenal job. And if it's going to be 350 plays 350 every game, fantastic. That's what the venue is now. You know, the boundaries aren't very big. We're thin atmosphere. The batting wickets are good. And, you know, I actually think it's a fair wicket. The bowlers who bowl well there do really well. So, um, yeah, Peter Murphy on Instagram, good question. Uh, sorry if I missed it, but what was my thoughts on Ireland's performance today? Uh, I actually started at the very uh, first thing I said before anyone even asked me, uh, incredibly proud. Look, Irish cricket, as we all know, uh, Peter, I'm sure you're involved in it back home, uh, is a small community. And I think what they've done through these three tests, given they haven't played a Red Bull game in four years, given there is no first-class cricket in Ireland right now, given, like I think Andy Balburnie said it a bit in jest, he hadn't seen a red Kookaburra in four years. Um, Kookaburra ball, that is. It, it's a phenomenal achievement. And that doesn't, like, they could lose this test still by a distance, and most people who play Sri Lankan ball do. But that doesn't matter. Like, what they did on day three, and I was lucky enough to be there commentating on against Bangladesh in, in Dhaka when they won, won the full day. Look around, Andy McBride and Harry Tector won that day. Um, that was just sensational. And to be there, be a part of that, I actually was pretty emotional at the end of that day. I, I'd love to have been in Sri Lanka for this test series, but, you know, naturally with my affinity to Nepal, I had to be here for this. So, yeah, to be able to watch that day today. And again, look, if they go on and win their first test, it would be ludicrous. But just to win a day, they won that day today against Sri Lanka. And look, I hope it's okay. I know he's got cramp. And um, if Sterlo's okay and can bat fully tomorrow, every chance that he get 450, maybe 500, that would be amazing. Uh, so, yeah, really proud, Peter. Thanks for asking. Uh, Ankit, uh, Ankit asked, share my experience about TU and uh, crazy Nepali fans. Um, I don't want to say crazy, I want to say passionate. Uh, I, I've, I've never experienced anything like it. I, I when I worked for ICC, I was pitch side when Carlos Brathwaite hit uh, Ben Stokes for four sixes. I was literally pitch side, like 80 yards away, sitting down with my digital content team and I was telling them what to do. And that was incredible. Of course it was. It was 80,000, 100,000 screaming, screaming people at Eden Gardens. 2015 World Cup, I was pitch side when uh, Shane Watson or I think Steve Smith did the winning runs, Australia, New Zealand. Like, they're bigger crowds, right? And they're bigger stadiums, more modern stadiums. But you compare that to the TU International Cricket Grade when it was packed there the other day, last month. Like, I don't, I don't think there's any comparison to, to, to Kathmandu. There's like a, I'm going to not think of the word, the correct word to describe it, but there's a kind of, they don't get a huge amount of cricket here comparatively. So like, it's almost like a throwback to 20 years ago where like, I don't know, I'm not describing it well, but it is next level. And I like, if you're watching from another part of the world, come to Nepal sometime and watch a game here, particularly watch a big game here. And they're going to get more and more big games going forward. It is next level. Yes, the facilities are rudimentary. Yes, like, you know, it doesn't have an all-seated stadium. But you go in, you sit in the grass banks. It's it's like, it's not feral, but it's like, it's so passionate. It's so raw. It's so emotional. And everyone lives every ball and they really know their cricket. And one thing I love, they always clap the opposition when they get a 50, a 5, or a 100. Like, that, that is, even in that heat of battle against UAE, when they needed to win to qualify for Zimbabwe, they all stood up and clapped, clapped Asif Khan for making a 41 ball 100. And it's not like a little polite kind of, like, you know, English clap. It's like, that was awesome what we just watched. They're beating us. But, yeah, 
uh, it's an awesome grade. I love that grade. Absolutely love it. Um, okay, last couple of questions. What, what, what time are we? Hold on. Okay, we're going to do five more minutes, then that's it. So last couple of questions, get them in quickly. Get a couple on Instagram here. Uh, Rai Kan uh, Kiwang says, what about Nepal and Ireland one day? Yeah, 100%. Ryan Burrell, good day, mate. Hope the new baby as well. And uh, love to uh, your wife and to you as well, mate. Great to hear you become a father. Tenzing Nutup asking, what about our guy, guy Nendra Maladai? Great guy, um, really good leader. And uh, yeah, just, just a really good human. So let's hope he keeps going for the team and, and is needed, is there when he's needed. Uh, Binay Yanib says, why can uh, Nepal not perform the same outside of Nepal? Um, I think they're getting better at that. They've only played four games since Monty Desai has been uh, appointed outside of the country, and they won three of them. So that's a pretty good record. They're always going to be a bit better in their home conditions. Uh, Anjan Dalakati says, why did I get so emotional when Kushamala scored 100? Um, I'm glad someone asked that because I, I did not know. I swear to you, I did not know the camera was on me at that point. Um, so I can blame Yopesh, our producer. Um, I, I, I had just finished describing his 100 uh, and put my microphone down and, and Sharad uh, was talking at this point. And it, yeah, it was hugely emotional. I, I, I think the world of Kushal and he's an awesome kid. And I think he's so, so talented. And I know he's kind of, he was dropped. He was left out of the team. He was this kind of boy wonder who made Broke Sash and Tendulkar's record for the fastest 50 of all time. Uh, in ODI cricket and the, you're sorry, the youngest 50 of all time was only 15. And then, you know, the pandemic came and when he came back, he, he actually did really well in the first T20I series against the Netherlands and Malaysia, but then had a pretty poor series and found himself out of the team pretty quickly. And he was like 17. I, I just, I couldn't believe that he was out of the team given how talented he was and to see him come back. And that means he played. I, I stood at that entire innings. I usually commentate sitting down. Most people do. I could not sit down from, I think it was his fourth ball, he had a four or six. And I think my second or third description of was, this is incredible. And he was only on 20 at the time. There was just something about that innings, a 59 ball century at the age of 19, next level. Um, Life on screen asked, what did myself, Monty and Kushal talk about the other day? You saw a video, yes. Somebody was video recording us from the deep and posted it to TikTok apparently. Uh, I'm not on TikTok. I don't intend to be on TikTok. Uh, we were having a private conversation. I was congratulating Kushal. That was that was it. Um, nothing else. And he's a great kid, and, and Monty is a great coach. Uh, okay, last couple of questions from um, YouTube. Is Paresh Lahani my best friend? Asks uh, the boss. I love Paresh. He's an awesome guy. He has got the most infectious personality. He's got a great laugh, and uh, he can. Re he's got a great sense of humor. Like I mean, a killer sense of humor. He'll always giggle away. So yeah, I really enjoy commenting with Paresh. Um, I know Johnny Barron, who came with us down to Barrow off that Pro Club Championships last year. I think that was last year. Uh, really adored Paresh as well. <laughs> so yeah, great guy. And I tell you something, Sharon, um, Sharon's doing a great job. Uh, Sharon's got real, you know, talent potentially as a commentator. So I hope you guys are nice to the, the two boys. They're, they're legends of the game here. Um, uh, oh. Uh, Saffel Powdell asking, what are the dimensions of TU? It depends where the pitch is, but it's usually about sort of 60 meter straight boundaries and then sort of 70 or 66 to 70 square boundaries, sometimes a little bit different. Um, final questions. <laughs> Somebody saying the dimensions are too small. They're not. It's a brilliant ground. Don't change it. It's perfect. Like it is perfect. We add floodlights to it. That's it. And, and you know, to get some new media facilities and, and um, and change rooms and stuff, but that's uh, that's it. Uh, um, my principal asked what hotel am I staying in? I'm in the wonderful Hyatt place, which I absolutely love, and the team here are next level. Adore them. Uh, thanks to everyone at the Hyatt place. Uh, okay, last five questions. We're going to do five questions, quick ones, on YouTube, and I'm going to close it off and thank everyone for joining me here on um, on Instagram too. Okay, so um, A Live Football says Nepal are going to play against Bangladesh before the World Cup qualifiers. Is this true? I have not heard that. I think they're going to South Africa on a preparatory tour, and they're more likely to play against the likes of um, Netherlands and Scotland. I don't know why they play against Bangladesh, given Bangladesh aren't in the qualifiers, so I, I would say no. Uh, that's question one. Right, four to go. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get some appropriate questions, plenty of inappropriate ones. Um, 
Kemal says Christchurch or Kurdipur. Kurdipur, 100%. Love it. Um, the boss says, do I think Nepali players should be playing in international leagues? Yes, 100%. We've already seen Sandy Blamichani do a lot of it. Uh, I think Kushal Mala, I, in fact, I'm, I want to find a way to get Kushal Mala two leagues. I think Dependra Singh Hari would definitely uh, be a really good asset as well. I think that uh, someone like Asif Sheikh has the potential to it, Kushal Bertel, Rohit Pedal, like Sampal Kami, like there's Karen Casey, there's loads of them that could. There's a lot of luck in getting a gig at an associate or as an associate in a franchise league and got to take that little bit of luck and then go, well, what is massive is that Cricket World Cup qualifier come June. I think if you do well at that, you could well see yourself get picked up, you know, get 100 against Sri Lanka or get a five with Paul against Sri Lanka or something like that, or West Indies or Ireland, Zimbabwe. There's a, I think there's some new league coming up in Zimbabwe. That would be a great place for some of those guys to um, get their first taste of um, franchise cricket as an associate. Okay, two more to go, and then we're going to call it a day. We've somehow nearly done an error. What I talked about for an error. Okay. Um, Rojesh Rajal said, Asia Cup to have only six teams, including one associate, doesn't sum up how good the associates are. What's my take on it? Um, yeah, I think the associates are probably good enough for there now to be, be an extra two. Uh, probably wasn't the case 10 years ago, um, but you could probably have two groups of four um, and three qualifiers from this, the top three from this, I think would all be good enough. And um, that might come in years to come. The Asian Cricket Council are doing a crazy good job at promoting the associates. They've just put in the Challenger Cup for the first time where you saw like Bhutan and um, Thailand and um, the Maldives, Iran, all these smaller countries. And then the winners, Saudi Arabia and Bahrain play 50 over cricket, like, in a really good tournament on grass pitches and the two qualifiers from that come to this and that's not even to mention their t20 structures they have their women's structures they have their under 19 structures they have their under 16 structures they have so they are doing a phenomenal job um, and look that might come in time but you know equally the asia cup there's five test nations five tests plus one associate it's an okay mix um, and i think whoever goes in it like what would be brilliant is let's say nepal or uae or hong kong or whoever it is qualified if they go and win a game there now obviously beating into your pakistan massive ask but if they did do that that might really they might look to expand that then for the next event and the other brilliant thing about the asia cup what they do is they alternate the format so in a odi world cup year like it is this year they played in the 50 over format uh, which gives the asian teams massive prep and really good um preparation to you know go and compete even better at the world cup and in the t20 world cup year it reverts to the t20 format so i think that's really good okay last two questions on uh, youtube we're going to call today. Big hello, I am great bowling throughout the tournament. Well done, buddy. Um, Kalam Asal asks, Will ICC arrange games with Big Cricket Nation? It's really up for Can to do that. They've got to try and find a way to, to kind of persuade a test nation to come here. And let's make it Ireland. Let's get those floodlights installed and let's make it Ireland in like a, a three match T20 and a three match ODI series, including like Saturday night or Friday night games, imagine the party atmosphere, that'd be so cool. So let's make that happen. Um, okay, last two questions, YouTube are calling it. Gonna try and get, uh, okay, Sarathak Rijal, who will score the next ODI 100 for Nepal in the next ODI? Uh, uh, okay, I think Defender's banning a bit too low to say him, you know, I love Defender's thing already. I'm gonna go ask Eve Shake. yeah, we'll go with him. And then final question, uh, <laughs> Milan Gully says, my head is shinier than my future. Thank you, Milan. That's very kind. Um, okay. Lauda says, Andrew, what are your future plans? Let's finish with that question. Am I joining Nepal as a think tank with the team? Uh, no, I've no intention to work full time with the Nepal cricket team, but I'm always there to help. And I do chat to lots of the boys and the coach whenever they... I don't know if they need advice, but if they ever do, always there to help. But I won't be working for them or with them. Uh, my future looks just like what it is now, more cricket commentary, I hope. And let's hope I keep getting gigs. And I'm mainly going to get gigs in the future thanks to the support of you guys. So that's a pretty good way to wrap it up. Um, it's pretty overwhelming, the number of people who message me and say nice things. So thank you. And um, yeah, that, that means a lot to me. So look, let's hope. Let's hope I can keep doing this. It's pretty rare for a guy who wasn't a famous player to be able to make it as a commentator these days. So, uh, yeah, that's that means the world to me. And I'm really lucky to be doing what I'm doing, going around the world doing it right now. So, 
thank you guys uh that's gonna wrap it up we had loads of people watching 325 concurrent 1300 likes on on youtube i think we got up to a couple hundred at one point on instagram there so uh guys thank you uh, so much uh see you tomorrow I, I should know what game is tomorrow i, I don't uh, i'll tell you that's the final thing i'll tell you i'll tell you where i am for the remaining games it's pretty easy i'm at the tu ground every single day so my, my venue doesn't change so tomorrow i'll be commentating on kuwait versus singapore kuwait will be looking for a big win and then uh the day after wednesday oman versus saudi arabia big chance for saudi arabia that and then thursday will be a terrific thursday it's going to be nepal versus qatar we're going to do a ticket promotion on that I'm going to work with my pay. They're going to give me some tickets. I'm going to buy some more. I've got enough rupees to do it. So we'll buy some more tickets, give away some freebies, make some people happy. That's Thursday. Then a day off Friday, I may have a few beers Thursday night, uh, which I'm looking forward to. Saturday is going to be semifinals day. Uh, Sunday, third place playoff day. And Monday will be the tournament end. That's it. Good night from me. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, great to see you all. Uh, I'll try to reply to some messages if I can. Thanks so much. Good night on Instagram and video. That's done. And good night on YouTube, guys. Uh, lovely chatting. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope I got to your question. Sorry if I didn't. But I will uh, chat to you tomorrow. You'll hear me commentate me. All the best. See you. Bye.